Hi guys, welcome to part two of the Kriegoff Factory Tour. As promised in this episode, we're going to cover the apprentice program and the surprising amount of skill and detail expected of the apprentices. Quality control, chemical processes, casting and milling, and some really awesome details about how these guns are checked out prior to shipping. Let's get to it. Uh, here we are in the apprenticeship department. Uh, that's where we train our young gunsmiths. So usually we have uh, two apprentices in each apprentice year. The whole apprenticeship program takes three years. So normally we have two, four, six people. Um, this is normally an amount of people what we are able to take over. That means when they, when, when they finish this apprenticeship program, uh, we offer him a job afterwards. So it's not like that we send him home and say, okay, you have to finish your apprenticeship okay, program. So we, don't, we, don't, we don't need you anymore. So it's not like that. Um, that's really the amount of people what we actually can take over into the production line. Yeah. Um, it's quite important to us that we do this apprenticeship program because uh, experience told us if we, if we get somebody else from somewhere else uh, to really have them to the stage where they can actually make guns, where they can fit barrels to a receiver, takes us quite a long time, even if they, if the, if they are, are already officially gunsmiths. Yeah. Um, so we really say, okay, we take the time and take those, put and, 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 uh, and teach them actually those three years and invest that, uh, that much, uh, that, well, that, that many years or that much time to really get them to a stage where they can actually make guns for us. And that's why we do it like that. And I have started here also. So I started at this workbench where he's, he's working at the moment now, 28 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't think buying a Katie shotgun because you want to go and shoot some sport and yeah, or whatever. Yeah. You're investing in apprenticeships, future jobs in yeah. this area. Yeah, it's yeah. just, you know. Lixwerf and I in Emsland. Um, and like I said before, it's not that this first year has nothing to do with making guns. Mm. So they will not even, well, of course they will see a gun, but yeah. they, will, they, will, they will not put hands on a gun actually on, on that first year. First year will be something what you see here on this. This is just a little bit of an example of what they're doing. You have seen Ralph Sommer uh, working yeah. with a hacksaw? Yeah. It's this one. That's, uh, yeah, and, right. he, and he made this hacksaw himself <laughs> 20 whatever years ago. <laughs> so he, did, he has done it here in this department also because he started here as well. So this is a hacksaw what you make yourself and it's not, it, it, it used to be a big steel plate actually. So, uh, no. <laughs> not, really, not really, just the pins falling out. Um, this plate. Uh, it's drilled out with a, with a drill, one drill, one hole after the other, beep, 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 until this shape more or less comes out of it. Then we'll have like shape look like, looking like this. Then you use the big file, taking off all of this, make it as straight as possible. You want to cut the radius with intolerance, so there's a drawing to it. It tells you the exact radius, how this needs to look right. like. So it will be checked afterwards, this radius, if it's correct or not. Make sure everything's 90 degrees. 90 degrees, degrees all yeah. that, 90 degrees from here to here. <laughs> Then we have uh, a fixing point from this part, which goes into the handle. Mm -hmm. So as you can see here, you see this the yellow color here. Mm -hmm. So this is silver soldering. Right. So that's practice for barrel yeah. connection to yeah. the monoblock on the, on the hacksaw. We put the number on him from the, the, that's the personnel number. So this saw actually belongs to the guy who actually made it afterwards. And uh, the screw is not the screw you buy in the hardware store. No, no you make be, it yourself. It be, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you make it yourself. So and this is all, all done, things. all done with manual filing, working with the manual milling machine, nothing else. Only handwork. This whole thing, to make one of these, takes four weeks. Every day work, eight hours work on it, four weeks. And if it's, if you fail, so if it, there's, you, you've got an angle that's off, do you start you again, get, a new one? You will get a new steel plate. <laughs> 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 nice. I can tell because I've done it. Yeah. <laughs> How many did you have to do? Only one, actually. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Only one. Um, yeah. But this is the, the, well, the experience what you can actually get afterwards to work with the file. Yes. Because uh, if you would do a barrel fit to a receiver, you need to file exactly straight. Everything has to be straight. It's not allowed to make it somehow radius or whatever. And this is the, the test piece, actually, how you learn that. So how long has this apprenticeship program been going? For how long? Yeah. 
think we started actually when we built this building. So the apprenticeship okay. program was one of the first things actually we started with. Probably the business ran for five, five, ten years maybe, and then we started with now. Yeah. Because we knew immediately we need to have those skilled people to be able to, to make this quality of guns what we're looking for. And this is just a, a little bit of an example of it. So there's a little vice like this, because the first year is also filled with working with the metal basics on the machinery, working with the lathe and working with the, with the milling machine. Yeah. So they make a, a vice, mm -hmm. just as this one is, and this is completely made on the milling machine. The mill. Also, the surface needs to be finished, so this is nitrided, so it's the same surface finishing as on the receivers. So very hard and very durable. Um, but this is a, mach a machine working uh, example. Yeah. Um, also this one, just a, a sample to, to do something with the lathe, just to get the right tolerances, to, to get the, the skills how to work with the lathe. And also specialized hammer, so this is a, spe a special hammer, uh, it's a gunsmith hammer we call it. Uh, this is individually made by, by, by each one of those, uh, of those people. And this is a very special one, because this is the very first, the, the first beginning, what, they, what you do uh, when you come here. Ooh. Wow, check that out. <laughs> so this one, this part used to look like, hmm, where is it? Johannes, so u stahl hast du nicht irgendwo rumliegen, oder? He will get it for us. It's a U-shaped uh, profile, like this. That's how it looked like before. Okay. So, we want to take off this one and this one, mm -hmm. by filing, only filing, nothing else, until this looks like this plate. No. So this is the first the step. You only cut it down. Depth. Oh, the full depth. With a file. Yes. But but with a with a big with a file like this. No, this one actually. That one. Oh, that's quite that's quite aggressive. <laughs> I guess that still takes a while. It takes quite a long time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but this is. I mean, if you if you think about, it, you use the file like this. Mm -hmm. uh, that means if you start here. You put a lot of pressure here. If you continue going that way, you will lose pressure here, but you will apply more pressure here. It's, you understand? Yes. Yeah. To make the surface straight. Because if you would apply always the same pressure, it will go like this. You don't want that. Right. You want to make it straight. And you do that with a flat file? Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. So if you continue going like this, you will always change pressure here, and you will always change pressure here. You want to keep it the leveled all the time. Right. Maintaining that balance. Exactly, and that's and that's what this is exactly, and that's what this is all about actually. And if you do that for a year, you know how to work with that. <laughs> so only actually trimming down those two parts of this of this. So how, how you call that? Flat surface. Exactly. That's the first thing, and afterwards you have a you have a plate which looks like this without the holes. Very nice and clean, flat, straight. 90 degree here, 90 degree here, 90 degree here, here. All the way around. Right. And then you start with a hole like this. And uh, this is the fitting part to that. And you want to make this part fit to the ex most exact tolerance as you can actually get it. So you, want, you don't want to see a big gap around here. And you want to make it like this. And you want to turn it around also <laughs> like this. And turn it around this way, like this. and like this. And the gap is always the same. And it has to go all the way through. By hand. Oh. By hand. <laughs> so this is the first. Second one is actually the same, but not changed twice, changed four times. And the other side four times also. And the next one will be like a screw, but the screw is reworked. It's not original size in the back anymore. So you cut it. So it has to go six times. <laughs> Probably on this thing, six weeks. Six Every weeks. day on this part. Wow. And then start again if it's wrong. <laughs> I did two of them. <laughs> you did two of them. <laughs> but uh, actually, for the second one, because I screwed up on that one for the, for the first beginning, I was able to, to cut these two parts with the milling machine. All right. So I started with the plate. Oh. <laughs> because I got successful on these with the file. All right. <laughs> Yeah, and this is just the rest of it. I mean, uh, we're talking about screwdrivers, talking about a clamping device like this. This is 100% handmade, this whole thing. Pre-cut on the milling machine, but to do the radius and everything, all by hand, with the file again. And this is all in that, all in that first year. This is what your 
your investment and in buying a yes. of yes. skills of the, Exa exactly. of the staff. Yeah. And the result of this is what you get out in quality if you buy a gun. Yeah. yeah. We see the guy in the... You see him, see Son Bancers probably, yeah. the tall guy. Yeah, that's yeah. him. Yeah. And he's here also. <laughs> so just because that, that is what he's doing, putting ribs on, he's still had to go through every part <laughs> of this. <laughs> Even Ralph Sommer, he's working with, the, with the only a woodworking Wood. department, but he's done all of this also in the, during the apprenticeship program. Yeah. Then we have a gun. That's actually the beginning of the second year. They start with a single, uh, single barrel break open rifle. So that's our Hubertus hunting gun. And if you look at the, uh, that's the blue color I was talking about. So we have the, the metal foreground, of course. the barrel and the receiver. And if you look at the, at, the, at the receiver, we have certain areas inside here which need to fit to the barrel at the same time. Because you want to have, if you, if you put the barrel inside and you close the lock, you want to you wanna have this gun react like if it's made out of one piece. Yes. Yeah. Um, if, you, if you achieve that, it, 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 it shoots very accurate, it shoots precise, and it lasts a long time. Yeah. And we're talking about uh, the pivot point here. The radius here, mm -hmm. here, 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 and here, here, and the lock also. Mm -hmm. So all in all, this is about actually here also, inside here, mm -hmm. inside here, because this supports uh, the hinge pin. Yeah. All of this together adds up in about 12 different surfaces, and all these 12 surfaces, they need to fit at the same time, which means if you connect this to the barrel, you want to have these all of these surfaces touch at the same time to the barrel. Yeah. So if you tell this to a, like a CNC machine or to a CAT system, it tells it's impossible because it's over, over engineered, they, 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 yeah. they, they, it will tell you. So it has to be one surface need to fit, the other one are somehow close intolerances enough. close, close but free. <laughs> so this is not possible to do with the machine, but it's possible to do with hand. So if you put the barrel inside, you will see this blue color here yeah. will print on the barrel almost in the, whole, in the whole area. Mm -hmm. And that's only what you, you can only achieve this by hand. And not only on this surface, you want to have it on all the other ones also. So you will see this blue color print on the barrel the same. On the bottom, you will not see anything because he probably did not put any color here. No, it's nothing here. But because he didn't put any color there, but it will print everywhere like this. Mm -hmm. And this is only doable by hand actually. And this is what they're doing. Right. And to be able to do this, they need to do this before yeah. to know how to how to do it. Become so, or to be able to do it. Steel. Exactly. <laughs> so this is exactly. one practice complete job, this whole Yes, job. this is the barrel fit to the receiver. Right. So now the receiver goes to the hardening department or to the hardening company, comes back and it changes a little bit in dimensions. Not much. Or we're talking about maybe a few hundreds to tens of a millimeter, but it but it will change. Mm -hmm. So this process will take will take place once again. So there will be a final fitting from the barrel to this more or less bent receiver a little bit. Because we cannot do anything on the receiver anymore, it is like it is. Yeah. So we have to fit this barrel, final fit it to this receiver again. But it's just a little bit needed, not much. And this is the, re and this is the reason why we still need to have a gunsmith. So yeah. even with the, with, with the very precise machinery, what you're gonna see later on downstairs in the bottom area, uh, even with the machines capable to produce this small tolerances, actually in a very, very precise parts, we still need to have this hand, hand work or hand fitting, which is still needed. So this going here, is this going to end up being a finished, finished item? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's not just a, not just Slave. a dummy, no, no, dummy no, 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 it's, it's going to become a real gun. Yeah. yeah. It's a, it's an order, some, some gun which is ordered by a customer. Okay. And uh, of course, he will take care of that. All of what, what, what they're doing is, uh, is within tolerance, of course. And if they screw up something, they will throw it away. We'll throw it away and uh, we'll just start with a new one until it's as it's supposed to be. Yeah, <laughs> something else, ain't it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah you don't see craftsmanship like that very often. And if I put it on, you will see the... Try, try to open and close it. This is the, this, this is the fit I was talking about. The, the pressure what you need to close it and to open it. Wow. Yeah, you can feel it's like... You have to, you have to pull it back. Oh, sorry. Close it. Like that. Ah, okay. <laughs> Try it, John, it's like... <laughs> <laughs> Do you 
I will do the first step for you. It's just, yeah, yeah. And just something out of the machine will yeah, not be like no. that. When I came back from engineering school, this is the first thing I did. Right. It's a testing machine. I was thinking, is it a yeah. stress yeah. test rig? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So it's a testing machine for actually set up for the KD at the moment. So here will be the receiver yes. with all the lock work everything inside. So that one is the, the barrel. So the barrel will be like this. So this cylinder will, will open and close the barrel all the time, cock the lock work. Yeah. And uh, that cylinder here will fire it two times, clack, clack, open, close, clack, clack. And this mechanism will open the top latch. Right. So it opens the top lever, open, close, clack, clack, open, close, clack, clack, all the time, all day long. So the last test was 105,000 cycles. Um, so did you program the like Arduino? I did, I did the whole, the, did the whole right. thing. Just a little SPS. Uh, um, uh, yeah. Well, what's what's the English name for that? S we call it like SPS. A microcontroller or yeah, a that's Arduino board. Yeah, yeah, same, same, same thing. Um, same with this one. It's a tr uh, testing device for the trigger group, mm. and uh, it's a a very good thing because if we change something in steel which means uh, we make the extractor out of a different steel quality or yeah. we change the hardening you can uh, see technology. We will put it in the machine first and have it run a certain amount of times. So they really say, okay, the wear is okay. It, it will not break, it will not do anything crazy. And if it passes the test, we will actually put it into the gun. If it will not pass the test, we will not put it in the gun. So we will not use the customer for any testing reasons or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So that's why we made this machine for and uh, if we do something different, this machine runs quite a lot of times. Because sometimes, uh, these times of the of of the of, of, yeah, of the of the, of the time, uh, sometimes we cannot get the steel quality anymore. What we used to get 20 years ago, 10 years ago. So they say, okay, this steel quality is not available anymore with the European uh, standardization of the steel. So some steel qualities that just disappeared. Yeah. So we have to switch over to something else. But you just never know if it's going to hold up or not. Yeah. So you put it in the machine, check it out. And if it's good, we'll do it. If it's not good, we'll not do it. Because it's a pretty good name at the end of it. Yeah, yeah. 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 Here, Wolfgang showed us around a sensitive area of the factory where we couldn't really film for privacy reasons. However, he showed us the incredibly sensitive machines used to precisely measure every part of their guns to ensure quality and consistency. The marriage of ultra-high-tech manufacturing techniques and materials with the highest level of hand-tool gunsmithing. This is the uh, <clears throat> surface finishing de department where we are here at the moment. Uh, you will see two of the bluing tanks. These are these two here. And we have the nickeling department, which is over there. And we also do the rust bluing. So there are three different surface treatments, what we do here in-house, uh, specialized on, uh, on the barrel setup. So if we're talking about uh, K80 barrels, which is like the sporting barrel, for example, which is no soft soldering on. So the whole barrel is actually silver soldered. So that's possible to do, to do uh, by the hot bluing. Hot bluing takes about half an hour, and it actually produces an oxidized surface onto the steel. So it transfers the silver steel to a, like a black colored steel. Yeah. So that's yeah. what the bluing actually does. And if we're talking about barrels which are soft soldered, like uh, our parkour barrels, for example, mm -hmm. and our hunting guns also, the drillings, like the over and under shot, uh, shotgun and rifle combinations, they all have soft soldering. So this is not possible to do it by hot bluing, because this bluing salt, which is inside this tank, will actually dissolve this soft solder. Yeah. Right. So the barrel will actually fall apart, basically. Yeah. So these barrels has to be, they have to be blued by the, by the rust bluing. Mm -hmm. The rust bluing takes much longer time because you put like an acid onto the steel surface mm -hmm. and you let it rust, that's why it's called rust bluing. And uh, you will grind off this rust, but only to a certain stage, not completely. And if you continue this process, actually putting acid on, grind it off, putting on, grind it off. And uh, after the putting it on to the acid and grinding it off, it will let it rust for about three, four hours, depending on the humidity of the air. So it rusts a little bit faster if it's more human, yeah. or if it's more, more, more moisture actually in the air. Um, and then it will grind it off again. And after each step, it will turn more to like a dark gray, and at the end of it to like a black finish. Right, so how many coats would that take? Depending on the steel quality. As yeah. better the steel quality gets, and yeah. we have quite a good steel quality, it takes quite a long time. 
So you have to be, it has to be between 10 and 15 steps probably. Yeah, right. And, and it takes about a week right, yeah. to do that. Yeah. And, and the steel has to be polished, mirror finished. To yeah, get and a typical, typical finish actually of this, uh, of, of this, this rust bluing is like a satin finish. So the hot bluing you can really do to like a mirror yeah, polished yeah. finish. It looks different. And if you do the rust bluing, because of the rusting, it puts a very, very small dent into the material. It yeah. looks like a satin finish. Yeah. So you can really tell by the look of it if it's yeah. a rust bluing or if it's like a, if it's if it's a hot bluing. And yeah. you do your own nickel plating as well. Nickel plating as well. Yes. Uh, this is a combination uh, plating process. What we do here. Uh, it's the beginning. It's like a chemical nickel plating. Well, the, to, to tell you the, the, the difference of it. So there's electric nickel plating mm -hmm. and there's chemical nickel plating. Right. Uh, the electro, electro nickel plating is actually has a better quality because it holds onto the material a little bit better. Yes. The problem on the electro nickel plating is you will have more material on the corners of the material. So you have like a plate and you put a, a hole through it, you will have more nickel on the corners of the, of the, of the right. hole. So this is a problem because we have uh, fitting areas on all the cross holes, we so need you to have to mill it back off again. Exactly, we yeah. should actually. Uh, what we normally, what, what we of course don't do, because you cannot put the finished receiver back onto the CNC machine. That's impossible. Yeah. Um, that's why we do a combination process. That means okay. the first two uh, one thousandths of a millimeter, we do electro nickel plating. So we have the strength of the nickel holding onto the material quite good, and the rest of the thickness for the corrosion protection, we do chemical nickel plating because the chemical builds up parallel to the receiver. Yeah. And so we have the advantage actually of both versions, and that's why we do a combination process. And this is getting the longevity and the, the, the you know the use out of the action and the hardness and the you know, corrosion stand. protection. Corrosion, corrosion protection. protection. Yeah, it, it, ha yeah. it has to have a certain a certain thickness of nickel mm -hmm. to be really like sealed. So yeah, there's yeah. no air allowed to get through this this sealing, yeah. and this is about uh, one and a half hundredths of a millimeter. That's the right. thickness what we what, what we what we need to have, and of course all the tolerances they are built to that. So we know we put a hundreds, one and, uh, one and a half hundreds of millimeter more material onto the surface. So all the holes and everything is already calculated with this layer, what we actually add, add afterwards. Is that the same, same treatment on the blue action? Uh, the blue action is like this, it's the same process on, uh, as we do on the barrels. On the barrels so right, it's just yeah. a regular bluing actually. Okay. So it doesn't, the bluing actually does not add any material onto the, onto the, onto the receiver or to the barrel. So the dimensions of the part will stay exactly the change. same. It will not change. And the blue is, is blue action? Is that the, the rust style, or is that the, the hot? Blue? It's the hot bluing. It's the hot okay. bluing, because again, there's no silver, no, no soft soldering on it. So everything which is not so, not soft soldered uh, is possible to be hot blued. Right. This has got to be a completely new section. Be That's a new section, exactly. Yeah. 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 So the CNC machines we used to have in the past, they were located in that area. Mm -hmm. yeah. So this building is, uh, well, not, not very new, but it's, it's, uh, it was built after the original building. Mm. So here we have the, the, the production area. So the receivers, uh, hammers, sears, foreign irons, top latches, everything will be made here from a solid piece of steel. Mm -hmm. So we use like solid bars or... Uh, Bar stock. What's that? Bar stock. Yeah, exactly or uh, forgings, mm. so that the raw material for the, for the KD receiver will al almost look like a KD receiver if you look at yeah. the outside contour, but it's a forging, mm. which is uh, uh, the advantage of a forging is now, um, is that the, uh, if, if, you lose, like, if you use like a, a raw material, like a long bar, mm. round bar or rectangular, whatever, whatever shape, the grain line of the material will be just straight, just mm. along the bar. If you use a forging, the grain line of the material will actually follow the outside contour, so it's not straight. Right. So the, it's like if you, if you take a look at a piece of wood, you will see grain lines. You will, you will actually see the grain lines on the grain line on the metal. You cannot see. You can, but, but you can see it under, under, under a microscope actually. Yeah. And if you just have a forging, the grain lines just follow the outside contour, which makes the material from the material itself already stronger than if you use, use like a, uh, just a long bar. That's why you use forgings, and um, forging is actually the same. One second. The raw material for this, this is a forging also. Right. That's why it's very, very strong. Mm -hmm. So the wall thickness of this is very thin, but the material itself is very strong. Mm -hmm. So this is the same what we use on the KD receiver. Yeah. And what you see in the back here, this is the raw material for or over there.
heavy like. <laughs> <laughs> And this is what I'm telling you, if you look at the grain lines, the grain line will not be like straight, there will be yeah, yeah. like this, like this, like this, like this. This is the advantage actually from the material what we're using as a raw part. And that's, that's obviously a K80 receiver. It's a K80 and K20 also. From K20 from the same castle? Yes. Okay. It's taking a lot more material off. Yeah. yeah. And we transfer about 75% of the weight of it, will become chips and we throw yeah, away. Yeah. Do you, do you recycle those? Do they yes. go back yes. in and then yeah. get turned yeah. back into yeah. the yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This one is making foreign irons. Now this is a K80 foreign iron, the, the front piece actually, not yeah, the yeah. rear piece. Rear pieces is attached to it. But this is made from a long bar. Uh, it's a five axle milling machine. So all these five axles, they can turn at the same time. Yeah. So you can actually would make like a probe paddle for an airplane with that machine. That would be possible because everything has to be able to turn at the same time. Yeah. If you take a look inside, you might see something. Yeah, so this is making these parts now and the raw material actually is a long bar like you can see in here. Okay. Well, I guess it does it just part off a piece. Exactly, it will, it, will, it will just mill it from the, from the front, from the side, from each direction, yeah. and it will just cut it off, yeah. and it will just move the, the, yeah, the yeah, rod into the material it. and start all over again. So, sorry, that round bar goes before it? Right? Yes. So this used to be like this before. So it will be into the machine, the machine will mill, mill from here, from here, from each direction, cut threads, making holes, everything, and it will be cut it off, then you have one piece, and then we'll feed the rod into the machine, this much more, and we start all over again until this rod disappears. That is mad how much material that's taking now. Yeah. 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 yeah, this is the, the new one, this one and that one, and this is the robot in between. In the middle. In the middle, exactly. And you can actually see in the rack in here, there's a KD receiver clamped yeah. in a little vise. So yes. this receiver goes into the machine, it will get finished. And um, you have seen this before? That will be the finish, well, not the finished one actually. Stage one, stage two, mm -hmm. stage three is not here. Right. Stage three will be, we will take it out of the machine, mm -hmm. we'll turn it around, we will finish the bottom with it. Yeah. So it's done in two clamping positions. Um, very important part, all the exits, all the turning points will be involved in that first clamping position, which means the tolerance from this from this hole here to this one to here, which actually determines the functioning of it, yes. is, is done in one clamping position, which means the tolerances There's of hole the holes is actually the tolerance what the machine has originally. And the bottom of it is to only finish the bottom of it with no functioning anymore. So all the all the functioning parts are involved in that first clamping position, which is very important. So it's it's we can get it as close as possible. So that's, does, that's where, where the latch goes in. Does the robot do the clamping or is that a hand operation and you feed it? No, the robot does everything. Right. Yeah. Clamping is actually, you see these little dents here? Yes. So the vise has like a grip yeah, key. and it goes into, into each one of those T's. Mm -hmm. So this is actually pressed into the material. Mm -hmm. So you'll see them everywhere. Here, yeah, they're yeah, already printed. So it actually clamps in those T's. It knows exactly. And so, ex exactly, yeah. And we use the, the beer cases <laughs> from our <laughs> local brewery. <laughs> Do so they come in filled with beer and then you empty them? That's why we only work uh, Fridays half day. Ah, right, because yes, yes. on the other half day we need to empty you the beer cases. You have to empty the beer cases, right, okay. <laughs> that's, you know, that's fine. That's, that's recycling. Do you need a hand? <laughs> <laughs> we can help with that. <laughs> that one is the, uh, the barrel CNC machine. So it's like, it's only four, I don't see only four exits, not five as the other ones, but it's just a, a, a long machine actually. Mm -hmm. So we can actually finish it, finish the rip of the barrels. So it actually makes the, makes the, the this, how do you call that? The, those like little, a, like little, little button. Button. Yeah. Right, yeah. Uh, this pattern, that's what the machine actually puts on. And of course, if you look at the, at the solder grip, the solder grip is, 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 it's bigger in diameter than it usually will be afterwards when the barrel is finished. So it has to be milled on the side, has yeah. to be milled on the top also. Then afterwards, the, 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 this cut, this like circles, yeah. had to be cut also. So we do this with this machine also. So it has to be long enough to make the longest K80 yeah. barrel actually to like a, uh, yeah. Of course, that's 
not heat any temperature really in there, is it? You know, could. Not, not really. That's why we use a lot of that coolant. Yeah. So the coolant is for lubrication yeah. and for cooling the, the metal, the, 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 the milling cutter actually also. Actually, without the coolant, it will be it will be run for five minutes and will be finished. Explode, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, not explode, but it will just get too hot. Yeah. yeah. So this is putting you on a is this putting your center tram line in and your rib checker or not? Yes. Yeah. Actually, on that one, because this is a classic side-by-side -side rifle, what is in here now? But actually, it makes this whole process. So it cuts the the slot for the for the uh, for the open side. Yeah. It cuts the slot for the mounting plate for the scope mount, so that the pivot plate. It also cuts the rear part for the back mounting plate. So it makes this all, all the milling cuts actually in the, into the rib. But like I said, it's it's doing the Katie barrels, it's doing the side-by-side -side rifles, all the different models what we have. It's just a different CNC program. Yeah. But the machine is capable to do all our different models. Yeah. So, roughly, how many models of gun do you actually make? Actually, if we are looking at, at the K80, only the K80. Yeah. Different barrel lengths, different calibers, different ribs. It's about 70 different versions, 7-0. Seven, seven yeah. Only K80. Yeah. And all the hunting models will add to it. Yeah. And be becoming more and more, actually. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. The lads with the files is more impressive <laughs> than me, like. <laughs> At the end of it, it's the combination of both of them. Yeah, yeah. So you really have the high technology here, and the, this old craftsmanship yeah, as yeah. it used to be. Here we have a lot of uh, a lot of the raw material. What we're going to use? I'm qualified to drive one of them. Ah. One of these here, I can drive one of these more well. Broomstick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and this is just waiting to become uh, any kind of gun part, actually. Uh, whatever. Triggers, foreign irons, and everything. Do you also mill the titanium here as well? Yes. Aluminum chips? Yeah. Titanium chips. Wow. Try it. That'll be weird, nothing. It weighs like nothing. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's titanium. So everything has to be divided up, so we have to be, say, uh, titanium separately, yeah. aluminum separately, so this all goes back in a separate yeah. way to the recycling company. All right, here we are at the last step of the K80 department, uh, which will be final checking. That's what he's doing at the moment. Thank you. Um, Final checking means uh, he will check actually everything on the gun. And everything means barrel length, caliber, that the correct stock is on. Making sure the, you that you check the timing it fits. Uh, oh, yes. <laughs> making sure that uh, the trigger weights are as the customer wants, it to, wants, wants them to have. Just everything which could actually go wrong during the production process of the complete gun. Also making sure that there will be no scratches in the bluing of the barrel, that there are no scratches in the finish of the receiver, no dents in the stock, just everything. Quality just make sure everything is right to the spot. Um, and after that, the gun is ready for shipping. Mm. Um, before that, the gun will go downstairs to the shooting range also, so we have an indoor shooting range. So each shotgun actually, on each rifle also, what we make, uh, will be sighted in individually. So it's not like that we may produce 10 K80s and only one of them will go to the siding in and will be checked that the point of impact is correct. And is no, that when each you single select one. which barrel hanger goes on or is that just a standard? Exactly. Yeah. That's why you see if you, have, if you look at 10 K80s, maybe one of them has a number six hanger, maybe one of them has a number five hanger. This yeah. is just production tolerances what we have in the barrel itself. And this is actually sorted mm -hmm. out by the different hanger when we sight in the, the mm. shotgun. So that, 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 the, the guy actually downstairs in the shooting range says, okay, I need a number six on that one, and I might only need a number five on the other one to get the same point of impact. But we have a, quite a big variety of, uh, so we can go up and we can mm, then yeah. go down either, either way, so we can set up the gun for almost everything. But that's because every gun was actually sighted in individually. See, all of, all of these used things here, <laughs> they wow. are all used ones. Because each gun, what we, what we make, uh, we measure the impact depths of the firing pin to really make sure that each, that each cartridge will go off. 
that there is enough force there, enough impact to the uh, to the primer to ignite the cartridge. In case you get a hard primer or a, yeah. Exactly. So we have the, the, the copper cylinder. So this copper is a very uh, unique alloy. So it's a, if, if we get them to always exactly the same alloy, so it has the same the same strength of the of the material itself. And we put this in a in a in like a in like a fixture. Hast du die eine Halde gerade noch wo das Ah, da ist schon. Hab schon. Hab schon. Da sind die. Yeah. So this is the 12 gauge here. So this goes in here. So we load it actually as like a cartridge. Yeah. And we just hold the gun straight down. So there's no side movement deviation. or anything, no deviation. And we hit it with the firing pin. We take it out and we have the measurement clock here. <laughs> and this one measures the exact depth of this dent. And when it reaches the spot where we actually say in, your, in, our, in our protocol what it, needs to, what it needs to be between uh, small, uh, somewhere within the tolerance actually, yes. what, what, what we give it, we say this is okay because some, mo most of the times you have a lot of mechanical parts inside and if the hammer is like not moving freely, mm -hmm. if the cocking rod is, is hitting somewhere and it's, not, it's bent a little bit maybe, you, you will never, you, I mean if you've dry fired it goes click click, it yeah. sounds good, yeah. but you just never know what's coming out <laughs> and, and, uh, on the primer side. So, and if we do that, we really know oh, it's, it, it's correct. I've never seen that. So no. that this is, that's why we see, see so many of them. So we're here with Ralph Miller. Ralph, hi, how are you doing? I'm totally great. <laughs> had, had beautiful time with you so far. Oh, and you. <laughs> uh, Ralph, you're the Vice President of Marketing. Yeah, it's true. Um, and you have brought this yeah. rather special piece to show us. We, Tell us about it. Yeah, this is our current gun of the year. It's called, it's a K80 S version. It's called the Buffalo Jump. And it shows the American, North American First Nations during a buffalo or mm, officially hunt. bison hunt. Mm. And uh, it, it shows on both sides, on the side plates, very, very detailed the, 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 the energy, the power of the mm. running buffaloes, the Indians in between, a chief watching the scene. And at the grand final, at the end, on the bottom side, mm. you see the buffaloes running over a, a steep cliff, mm. falling to death bringing food to the people. And the KDS is such a good action to do this on because yeah, huge just, so just, more, just more space to and show on. everything in detail. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's deep relief engraving combined mm -hmm. with Bolino style. Uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's unique, it's a piece of art. All handwork. Yeah. Um, it's absolutely stunning. The level of detail in this thing is just... Even just the sketches. Yeah, I, br I brought you some sketches to yeah. see how long it takes it, it takes to to develop yeah. that. Because first they they have to to get the idea to to put the the scenes and everything in right order. Mm -hmm. And you see, even for the for the bottom sides, how many different versions we had. Yeah, yeah. Before we decided, final, yeah, yeah. The individual, the development yeah. sketches that went into it, stunning. Even just the detail on the forehand. Yeah, the foreign iron uh, is, is a work of art in itself. Yeah. <laughs> Even just the bordering, the Native American uh, kind of art uh, style across the top of the foreign iron here. There's, there's detail everywhere around this bordering yeah, here. Yeah. Around so we the tried to use the, the native yeah. the tribals, is that the right wording? Yeah, I hope. yeah. When you're looking in detail, it's the kind of engraving where you look and you look and you keep saying yeah. something yeah. new yeah. all the time. Yeah. I have had it often in my hands and I, I still find new <laughs> details. It's, it's so amazing. Will this be an exhibition piece sort of kept with the factory or will it eventually be sold? No, no, there, there is already a happy customer oh, waiting, wow. waiting, oh, waiting wow. for it. Well, good luck and well done. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful piece. Beautiful. So while we've been at the factory, we have seen uh, quite an array of the different models of K80 that are made, as well as some other guns that we made here in Krieger. Um, I think there are about 70 different variations that are possible on the K80. Um, and we've got a selection here to run through of the stuff that they make from the K20, the K80, the Super Sport, Parkour, Parkour X, different calibers, different barrels, um, and of course, an infinite array of engraving. Ralph, what, anything that you want to show us that is particularly interesting? Yeah, I guess most of your viewers know what we have in our current product lines, all the the catalog engravings, how we call it. Um, I've prepared here some some special stuff. Indeed. What's what's maybe more worth to focus on? Well, this one 
This engraving pattern, or at least similar to it, I've looked at recently, yeah. uh, but not with the game birds. So that's a case yeah, that, hardened. Yeah, that's a custom engraving, mm. case hardened, with some fine detailed gold lines mm. and On the birds Even integrated in the side. Check room isn't just standard. Yeah, yeah. 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 So this Very is fun. a. It's a Forte. K, K, a K80 Victoria with a small gauge barrel. Yeah. Oh. Um, destined for the US, I'm guessing. Uh, this one is for the US, yes. Mm. But there are clients in the UK as well yeah. who are focusing on the on the on the on the Victoria especially. Very very pretty. Um, to be honest, I really like the case hardening finish that you guys achieve. It looks really deep. It's depth. Yeah, it's it's a it's a challenging process today mm. because uh, you know in the old days mm. this was done to to bring more carbonite in in the mm. steel to to get it hardened. But today, the modern innovative steel. They have enough already, mm. so it's it's challenging to to get the colors in because uh, there is so much carbon already in. Yeah. So that that's really oh, a, yeah. a science <laughs> to it's, to get the colors. It's the matchup of the color on every part. Yeah. Mm. Do you know there's so many different parts there, individual, but it all looks the same. Yeah. It's, yeah. It, it is really like love the detail, which nobody appreciates on the inside of the trigger guard. Yeah. The color mm -hmm. just. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even in the fore end down here, I mean, mm. you can see a little bit of gold engraving, yeah. some inlay. Yeah, nice, very, decent. Very um, we have a side by side here mm -hmm. with cyclet. Yeah. Uh, so that's the. Ooh. Ah, you see? <laughs> 20. That's the uh, Creek of Essentia side lock gun. That's, that's a true side lock. That's a true side lock. Right. And that's, yeah, custom, custom, custom. Mm. We do. Only a very small quantity in a year of mm. those guns. Very, very pretty again. Nice. Yeah, that's gonna be nice and quick. Like that. Single trigger ejector, obviously. Yeah. So Prince of Wales stock. Yep. Quite but long. you get the, you get the, the 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 traditional English one also. So we, yeah. oh, bottom line, as you know it, we we do. If it's technically technically possible, yeah, you will do. It. What our clients want to get. We just had done one with a side lever and outside hammers. Mm. So there is, even from a technical point, a wide range of possibilities. Tell us about this, because yeah. this is really interesting. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's also custom engraving. Um, it's a kind of a Celtic ornament oh. with a decent amount of gold in. And... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> Gold chalk, so yeah, we tried to. Hair. Yeah, exactly. So I love the text on these. Yeah, the choice of font. Yeah. Mm. It's almost like a kind of Art Deco. Yeah. Style of Celtic crossover with a bit of the compass. It's really interesting. And there's just so much like different different scroll, hinge. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of. Work. There's some silver also in. It looks like yeah. here in the center. Yeah. Silver on the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, just here and here. Very subtle. Yeah. Very subtle. Nice detail on the forehand eye at the top there. And I, I like the contrast for the, the, the dark background with the, with the lines. Yeah. Now, the one that I, my eye was <laughs> immediately drawn to when, when I walked into the room, something I've never seen before. Now, yeah, next generation if engraving. If you watch my channel at all, you'll have seen me at length discussing what I think should be the direction for engraving and this is absolutely nailed it on the head this very technical kind of repeated geometric pattern with this really really stunning colorway that's been set into the diamonds using an effectively like a, a heat treatment process mm -hmm. oh like yes please <laughs> <laughs> i want one the 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 k in the top latch but this, this have you seen? Yeah, this just it, yeah, into the rosettes. Just yes, this is it. This is where it should be going. Do like very <laughs> much. Do like this is lovely. This has put a smile on my face. This thing. There's just nothing like that, is there? No, nothing. no. It's unique, and it's so so pretty for just a simple geometric pattern. So this is right up my alley. Depends on how much, how quick you are edi with editing of that film. <laughs> right. We, <laughs> I would, I would put soon, I, soon. I won't put pressure on your shoulders. Okay. <laughs> um, it's still called design, so it means right. we're looking for a name. Maybe your audience 
Has right, a, gonna, has a, has it's a proposal. not going to gunny McGunn face, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I, would, I won't do a promise, but maybe there's a chance so, so this is to... Gonna to a, this it, is going to be a, like a standard... Yeah, it will, it, will, this isn't a custom. Oh. it will It will go into the standard catalogue. So yeah, that, that's the next step of engravings. Oh. Oh, we, we, oh. We, we all knew that today we need some technical support. We can't do every single engraving by hand. Oh. And here we used the technique. I know it's it's when we've looked at some of the stuff that mm -hmm. we've seen here that have just got hours and hours and hours and hours of handwork pushed into it. It's the way forward. But like this has really stood out for me. But moving on to this dragon back like situation. <laughs> I mean this I love is, the word situation. <laughs> yeah. This is just cool. I mean look at the golden lay, it's just oh. the dragon scales on oh, the go. Look at that. Yeah. It's got great detail, it's again. A, it's almost like cartoon. Like a rock and roll font, almost. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Look at the shape on the top. The scaling on the, on the top latch and underneath uh, the top lever. Again, a... Yeah, we, we, we try to, to show just an absolutely wide range on, yeah. on ideas, on possibilities, what can be done. Very face. unusual, very unusual. Yeah, oh, there's a castle. Well, well, spotted. <laughs> with so, a little moon. So, so maybe it's bird. made for the UK market, huh? <laughs> I wouldn't comment, but um, yeah. Dragons, face, teeth. It's just a moon in the back. More dragons, mountains. <laughs> you just keep looking and looking. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that's also an engraving where you can yeah, see many, many times and, and see always new details. And it, it just. Yeah, the level of depth. It just has such, such a texture. Mm. So this was a custom? Yeah, it's a custom gun. Yeah. yeah. So it's fair to say that if you want it, they can make it, basically. Because um, that is an absolute stunning. So, so how do you come up with this design? Do you say, I want dragon on pictures? Uh, that was exactly the idea. So it's, we gave the, the engravers free hand and said, we need something unusual with dragons. Okay. And that's the result. It's lovely when you... I guess it must be great for the engravers because they're given the free hand to, to, to come up with stuff like this yeah. and then execute it. So we do that when we know us for a long time and we, we know what we, yeah. what we can expect. It's just different from a, a partridge or a cock pheasant, isn't it? It's uh, just, uh, slightly, yes. Yeah, it's just... <laughs> and let's not forget standardised. I mean, we've, we've seen a lot of very pretty stuff, but this yeah. is a very, very simple black action yeah. K20 stock gun. K20, I, I reviewed a while back, probably my favourite 20 ball that I've ever shot. Just a lovely, light, very, very svelte, beautiful gun to shoot. No pretension about it, it's just a K20. It would be at home, on driven, on a, on a walked up day, super. And, and some of the stuff, ah, oh, to play in action. The yeah. level of polishing that goes back and forward mm -hmm. with these guns. <sighs> you, you can't get it across, can you? No. The no. amount of work that's no. in them. You, you, yeah. Absolutely. Um, and that side, we, we have something more, you know, out of the traditional standard range. Traditional stuff, game tradi scenes, exactly. Yeah. Um, this with the gold bordering, uh, we were looking at this yesterday. Um, Famous gold super scroll. <laughs> yep. Very, very classic. That's an engraving that's for, with us for a long, long time, yeah. that uh, pattern. That's a very left-handed stock. <laughs> uh, yes, trap <laughs> special, left-handed. Yeah. yeah. Um, if you saw the video I made a little while back with Phil, he talked a bit about this particular stock and this design um, and where it came from on this um, pro rib action. Yeah, very much a trap gun, for sure. I like the engraving. Is this another, another custom? That's another custom. I also, like the also, also <laughs> <laughs> I have a good taste. I, I love it. Yeah, this is a bit more traditional, isn't sure. it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the gold, the gold border and stuff. Decent gold borders, yeah. yeah. Floral ornament all around. Yeah, we talked about that Some process birds. yesterday with Wolfgang about the, the, the gold wire and the way it's hammered into a mm. um, uh, 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 cut, uh, mechanically, effectively mm. held in yeah. by friction. There it is, the dovetail into in the gun. Yeah. <laughs> when you're seeing them birds now, all I can see is all the little lines of gold that's <laughs> hammered in. They, 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 they're, they're gone. Yeah, they're different techniques. So our engravers, they, they really they, they put gold lines in mm. wire by wire by mm. wire, and then 
they hammer it that looks like one and other engravers they they cut out plates so there oh. are different techniques so we use the that wire mm. gold wire the diamond technique. design in the top lever mm -hmm. is just done to pull them a precision yeah yeah definitely i mean i've done a little bit of tech right now so i could probably do that do you think? <laughs> 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 I <wouldn't pay> for us. <laughs> Ralph, thank you so much for showing us some of this stuff. It's really, really pleasure. interesting. Um, even I, I said my favourite gun thus far is this one, which is going to be a standard gun. I think that's just a lamp pigeon, the one that's a dragon. Right, fair enough. <laughs> okay. I won't fight you for it. I'm having that one. Right, <laughs> guys, I really hope you've enjoyed this quick look around the, uh, the different models and uh, engraving patterns that are available on Kriegoff. And uh, see you next time. Please consider subscribing and clicking the notification bell to be informed as soon as new content drops and to make sure that you see the rest of the series as soon as it's available. See you next time.